Another in my Forgotten Classic series is The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, a great Western from turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, America, Texas, Mexico. Let me tell you why I think this movie is really good. Good Western coming up next. You won't find The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez on many great westerns lists. In fact, I couldn't find out hardly any of them. Nevertheless, this is quite good western. I have it in my top 50 all-time westerns, probably even higher than that, because I think this is really well filmed, really thoughtful movie, engaging. It's, it's both cinephile-like, because it's got lots of great shots and shot making and sounds, but it's also, I think, for just about anybody who wants to watch a movie, because its basic premise is a manhunt and there's a trial. The movie stars Edward James Olmos, and this is from 1982, as Gregorio Cortez, a man who was sung about in a famous ballad in Mexico and Texas in that area after the exploits or after his story around 1901 or so. And thus this movie is an interpretation of a ballad. Nevertheless, and this is interesting and maybe ironic, it's filmed in pretty stark realism, documentary style, a lot of handheld cameras, a lot of moving cameras, and it feels like you're really there, even though we're in a mythical world of the ballad. It's an interesting juxtaposition of documentary realism and mythicism. The movie opens with a declaration that there are tensions between the Texans and the Mexicans, actually the Anglo and the Chicanos down around the border or in Texas 50 years after Texas won its independence through violence through war. You still have these tensions and, and there's a lot of linguistic tensions. In fact, the movie turns on the fact that everybody needs a translator to go from English to Spanish or Spanish to English. You'll see a lot of translation in the movie, literal translation by translators. And the entire case of Gregorio Cortez turns on on a mistranslation of one word, which you will find out about when you watch the movie. Anyway, the movie starts with the manhunt. Gregorio Cortez is accused of a murder, and he's fleeing. He's being hunted by Texas Rangers, and we're told that the Texas Rangers are going to go away to be replaced by a more elaborate and civilized law and justice system. But this case might justify the continuation of the Texas Rangers, hence maybe why the Rangers are going after Cortez. During the manhunt, you get flashbacks and several perspective flashbacks where characters tell their stories about what they saw, what they witnessed, and you, the viewer, get to judge how guilty or innocent Gregorio Cortez actually is, whether he murdered or whether he didn't murder, whether it was a complicated case. Gregorio Cortez is Mexican. He's got a family. His family's put in jail by the system. It's really harsh and awful. This movie is definitely about jail and torture and sort of the injustices of the justice system at the time, particularly racial tensions. However, I find this movie is also more universal. It can apply to any sort of minority or subgroup being dominated by a majority group here it just happens to be in a united states context anglos and chicanos i'm sure the movie is read that way in fact the movie case that i have says this is a great movie of chicano or a latino film i find the first hour is pretty captivating the manhunt all around and interestingly this movie i think is quoting and using the great fritz long german film m which is also about a manhunt or quite a bit of that movie is a manhunt you get the same kind of vibes as m here yes the man might be a terrible monster ter terribly guilty the guy who's being chased but the guys chasing him are a bunch of good old boys who are not really into justice per se they're sort of more like a pack of animals perhaps or you get that vibe at least not that they're all bad but they are a pack chasing a single individual and sympathy especially in film is thrown usually towards a single individual when there's a manhunt so the first hour goes towards that and then this is not a spoiler there's a trial later in the movie after cortez is caught because how, how could he not be caught in this scenario? So you get the full scope of the ballad, and that's why it's not a spoiler, because you can go look up the ballad yourself. And thus his ballad falls back on sentimentality, especially for the victim, which is interesting and helpful on the one hand, but maybe too simplistic, and that's my criticism of the film. I think the film ends simplistically in the sentimental, whereas the end credits show you there's a lot more to the story than just the end of this movie. There's many, many years of, of stuff going on after, and it fired my imagination to, to read those in credits. I might like another movie about Gregorio Cortez and sort of the full scope of his life. But anyway, this is a ballad movie, and, and it's definitely going to be more emotional 
all that's fine, and this is one of the better, you know, Western manhunt movies I, I can even think of, because it just keeps going on and on, and one of the great, great and interesting things about this movie is you watch it, and you go, oh, weren't all these people in Blade Runner? And in fact, Blade Runner came out in the same year as this movie, and you have Edward James Olmos, William Sanderson, this other guy whose name I forget, and they're all in Blade Runner together, like, how did this happen? But Blade Runner, of course, is a manhunt movie, or part as well, a guy chasing other people down, and so what was going on at this time when we're talking about manhunts and chases and so on. I think the main reason to watch this movie, it, it's pretty arresting story. It's pretty well filmed. I like Edward James almost and basically everything and is a different sort of Western. This really is a revisionist Western. That word gets thrown out a lot on Westerns after say 1960 or 1970. But this one really, because it's focusing on the Mexican who can't speak English or doesn't speak it very well. And so then you get actually a revisionist take. Because if you look at the, like, for example, the beginning of Howard Hawks's Red River, where it's definitely asserted that Americans can take out the Mexicans and take their territory. Here, it's opposite or more subtle than that, obviously. And so you have do have that reversal of Mexican-American relations and thus the revisionism. And not to spoil it, but there is a twist here where you think Gregorio Cortez does not know English at all because he needs a translator. But then you realize at some point he does know a little bit of English. And when he hears something in English, it's a really interesting moment when he realizes something. Because now you understand he knows English and he already knew it and he learned something. It's a really great moment. I won't say anything more about it, but I really appreciate stuff like that in this movie. So I wonder if you've seen this movie. What do you think about it? If you haven't, what are your questions about it? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.